Hello there, how are you doing? Hope you're keeping well. Uh, I'm back in the office, who knew? Uh, it looks like lockdown is for now, I don't wanna jinx it, over in Hong Kong for a little while and we're all back in work. Uh, it's a pretty gloomy day, I have to say. Uh, so I don't have on my lighting rig because I rushed in with my sort of shaky hand cam. Uh, I'm using that. So I hope the lighting isn't too bad. I hope the audio isn't too bad and hope you can hear me. Uh, audio should be fine because I'm using some kind of cool wireless mics that kind of make everything work nicely. Anyway, this week, uh, if you know me in any way, you'll know that I am a bit of a gamer, a massive fan of video games, PC games, uh, pretty much anything. Um, started gaming back in the days of the Atari 2600, which is going to date me terribly, uh, and still doing it today, although I have to admit I don't find as much time as I used to, and I certainly can't play competitively anymore because I suck and I get beaten by 12-year-olds at anything I try and play, which is very embarrassing. But there is a massive thing going on in the world of app stores at the moment, thanks to a particular video game. Now, are you familiar with the company Epic? Uh, you should be. If you have children, I almost guarantee that they probably are. So Epic, for me, was the company that brought us Unreal and Unreal Tournament and later on Gears of War, uh, which were cool video games which came out when I had more time and not much money and had to spend the same time playing one game on a rather rickety old PC uh, over and over and over again. But now they are most famous for two things. One is the Epic Game Store, which is a rival, an online storefront that sells games. It's a bit of a rival to Steam, which is probably the most dominant seller of games digitally in the world at the moment. Uh, but they're also very famous, and you will have heard of this, for Fortnite. Now, Fortnite is a battle royale, although it's, it's expanded beyond more than anything than that, really, video game, which is hugely, hugely popular. It's free to play. Most of the revenue comes essentially from buying content with microtransactions, where you make in-app purchases essentially within the game. They can be outfits, weapons, whatever you want to do. Now, I don't play Fortnite. I played it once, basically had my ass handed to me, thought this looks fun, uh, but I'm never going to get good, as they would say, so I won't be playing it anymore, uh, much as I would like to. And I've kind of, maybe because I'm getting old and my reflexes aren't what they were, more into a sort of an RPG and a strategy game these days than a first-person shooter, although I do love Doom Eternal single-player, admittedly. But anyway, Epic uh, has become huge thanks to Fortnite. They're already doing pretty well, but now uh, their revenue is up. They are one of the most successful game companies in the world, thanks purely, really, to the success of Fortnite and, I guess, to a certain extent, to the success of their own game store. But it really is Fortnite that's, that's taken them home. And they are in a bit of a fight. And the fight's an impressive one because it brings into question how, essentially, digital app stores work. Now, unless you've been living under a rock or you don't own any devices, and you probably, if you don't own any devices, and how you're watching this, you will be familiar with an app store. I guess Apple made it really famous when they launched their original app store way back when. But the Google Play store, Microsoft has its store. Everyone these days has an app store. Digital storefront, selling content, selling apps, selling whatever it may be. Uh, in some cases, selling music. I mean, in some ways, I suppose the iTunes store is also essentially an app store in a way, though it is content rather than apps. Um, and it's run by a platform provider, be it Apple, be it Google, be it Epic, be it Valve with Steam, whoever. And it sells stuff and people can sell their wares through this platform. And these platforms have become ubiquitous in the digital age. Uh, the App Store, for example, can make or break essentially a small developer if they've put something out. Um, and we've acted here uh, at this law firm for companies who have done very well out of the App Store, others that have suffered because they haven't necessarily been able to get the exposure that they want. So, kind of cool. Now, Epic sells Fortnite, obviously through its own Epic Game Store, but it also has it available on various platforms. So you can play Fortnite these days on seemingly anything that's got enough processing power. So you can play on the Switch, you can play on the PS4, you can obviously play on PC. You can also play it on an Android phone, or you can play it on uh, an Apple device, uh, an iPad or indeed a, a, an iPhone or I suppose if you're still buying those, who is actually? An iPod Touch. I'm sure they're about to be discontinued but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Now the issue is, remember I said Fortnite is essentially free to play but everything goes through essentially in-app purchases. So Epic, remember, makes all their money essentially from the content they're selling within the games, decided that they weren't very happy the way that Apple's App Store works and indeed Google's App Store works. This is because Apple takes a significant cut of the proceeds 
from anything that's sold on, on their store. Um, same as Steam does, uh, Valve Steam with video game searches, and so indeed the Epic Game Store was used as a counter to that because they, they take a smaller slice of revenue than Steam does. Uh, Google probably does the same, although I haven't actually looked into it in as much detail as I perhaps should, because the big fight with, for Epic is with Apple. So if you want to sell something and it has an in-app purchase system within Apple, so you download the app, you buy something in the app, and then a share of the revenue from any purchase in that app will go to Apple. Everything goes to Apple. Any sort of money changing hands will go to Apple. Epic decided they didn't like this. They didn't like what they say is a 30% cut essentially going away to, to Apple when they haven't actually had to do any work other than hosting essentially a couple of servers for transactions and a storefront. So they decided to essentially bypass the whole in-app purchase system, making it the case that you could actually make transactions directly through Epic using, through Epic using Fortnite and therefore Apple gets no revenue. Now this is a breach of Apple Store's, the App Store's terms and conditions. So Apple understandably weren't very happy with this. They made a few warnings. Eventually, they removed Fortnite completely from the App Store. This triggered people selling phones and iPads on eBay uh, that do have Fortnite installed so that you could play it, which, let's face it, the scalpers will always manage to do something a bit stupid, but there we are. But uh, this meant that now you can't essentially download Fortnite at the time I'm making this video to play it on your iPad or, I, um, or your iPhone. So if you're trying to shut up your child by making him play Fortnite, you can't do that. They'll have to play Minecraft or Roblox instead. Uh, if you want to play it yourself, similarly, you can't do that either. So Apple weren't very happy. They went a bit further and they actually tried to take away some developer licenses from Epic, which seems a bit of a foolish move. But Epic have started a lawsuit. So they are suing to say that essentially Apple's behavior and indeed, if this is correct, the behavior of any other storefront, digital storefront that charges a massive commission, is anti-competitive and is, is a breach of antitrust laws in the US. Now, I am no expert on antitrust law, let alone uh, anywhere, certainly not the US. I know about competition law here in the UK and the EU, uh, sorry, here in Hong Kong and in the EU. But um, you know, I'm not, it's not the thing that I do the most of. It comes up every so often when I'm dealing with things like monopolies, uh, occasionally predatory pricing. So I don't know if the US laws will actually fall in favor of Apple or Epic. But it does raise some interesting questions. Because I've always seen a digital storefront as a shop. You know, think of contract law. Um, if, you've never, if you're not a lawyer, I'll give you a very basic rule of contract law. If you go to a shop, Anything you buy and sell is dealt with by essentially the very basic principles of contract. This is offer, where you make an offer to purchase something, uh, and acceptance, when that offer to purchase something is accepted, and you exchange the money, there's essentially been some consideration paying for the goods, and off you go, you walk away with the goods. So you walk away with a brand new hat, or I don't know, a, a video game, or whatever. Now, a digital storefront legally works the same way. I mean, essentially, uh, everything is advertised on the storefront. You make an offer to purchase it. That's then accepted by the, the people selling the goods. So Apple will accept your, your purchase when you click on that buy app thing and download it to your device. All so far, so good. But in law, common law at least, at least the laws that I'm, uh, I'm educated in, you are free to sell in your shop, if you are the shopkeeper, whatever you want. You can decide what is for sale. Uh, subject to some, some anti-competition laws, which were essentially where you're basically distorting the, the face of competition in the jurisdiction where you operate, I'm paraphrasing very much uh, and base making very much more basic the EU and indeed the Hong Kong approach, uh, you can decide whether something gets sold. You can say, well, I'm not selling this, so that's fine. I don't want to sell in my hat shop uh, a bunch of, I don't know, what would be not good in a hat shop, shoes. Although I suppose hats and shoes might go together in some shops, but never mind. Bear with me on that. But you have complete freedom. You don't. You can't be forced to sell something, and it smacks to me a little bit. You can also indeed set some sort of commission for what you're selling. So if you're selling someone's product, the cut you take, you are free to decide that, subject to breaching anti-competition laws. I keep mentioning competition laws because they're important. So the whole Apple and Epic spat seems a bit weird. Apple has removed Fortnite. Epic isn't very happy. Um, can Apple do that? I mean, my view on this is yes, they probably can decide what they can and can't sell. They remove content from the App Store all the time, stuff that may be potentially infringing on their terms and conditions, which I think Fortnite is doing now. 
things that may actually be something that's illegal or does something that you shouldn't be supposed to do, um, they can remove that as well. So I don't know whether Apple, whether Epic's going to get very far with this. It raises an impressive question in terms of what app stores should be. Should they essentially be like a free-for-all where people have complete access to applications, whatever they want, and that the store is literally just, I guess, just processing payments, not actually managing the storefront? Uh, or are they something where actually it is a walled garden? Now, we all know Apple. If you, I mean, I have to stay, stress, by the way, I am a bit of an Apple fanboy. Uh, and I, I, I use both Apple and Android devices and Windows devices and occasionally Linux, but not very often. Um, but I do like Apple's ecosystem because it's a bit of a safe space and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry so much about security as I would if I was using Windows uh, or if I was using Google. And indeed, I usually recommend Apple to people who aren't particularly computer savvy because I think, well, they're less likely to get them into trouble. You're less likely to open up a browser find out they're still using Internet Explorer, and there's so many taskbars that they've all installed by mistake that all their data is being stolen. So I do like it, and I appreciate in some ways the wall garden that many people think is a, essentially a criticism of Apple, but I wonder whether a walled garden would suddenly become something that is not allowed by law, in the US at least. And I don't know. I find it really interesting. Now, I think the, comp the reason I kept mentioning competition is because competition is key. If Apple's behavior is shown to, shown to be essentially predatory, and then the same behavior that's being done by Google with their store, and then I think they may go after Valve and Steam for their game store, then we have a massive issue arising in terms of how app stores work, how contractually they should work, and what can be sold on those stores. And it could be a bit of a game changer. We also will find, though this isn't anything new, that different jurisdictions with different laws will probably have different app stores, but they already do. I mean, that's not a big problem. But you might find content is different prices are available at different places between locations. To be honest, that already happens too. Uh, I often wonder why I'm sort of paying, I am, incidentally, I'm on the UK uh, store for most things um, for just legacy reasons more than anything else, mainly music actually, because I'm trying to stay in touch with the UK music scene for my, uh, my sort of secret side job, radio job. It's not really much of a secret. Um, but I can see that changing. But you may find the whole thing gets blown open. If a court orders that Apple's behavior is essentially illegal, that they can't charge as much in terms of commission on in-app purchase or indeed app sales in general, that they can't essentially remove things for breaching their terms and conditions, which I think is unlikely, but you never know. I think we're in a whole host of trouble. And we're back to that question that I asked a couple of weeks ago about whether we have a right to apps. Epic certainly thinks so. Now, I'm kind of a little bit on the side of Apple there, but let's go back to the side of Epic. For Epic, you know, they're doing kind of a service here. They're essentially trying to make sure they protect their revenue stream. But I think they're also trying to protect the streams for developers because, OK, Epic with a massive success like Fortnite, 30 percent of your revenue is a lot of money they're losing, but they've got a lot of money. If you're a struggling indie developer and you're giving up 30 percent of your sales just to a storefront, then it has a massive impact. It's the difference between you being able to basically upgrade your, your computer systems for the next big thing, uh, the difference between you being able to go out for fancy dinner if your app's not particularly successful, but who knows. So they are doing a good thing. So it's hard to know which side to come down on. And I would be very interested in what you guys think. Uh, are Apple in the right? Should they have complete control over their app store? Should all app stores have complete control? Is it like a shop? where essentially you decide you can bar someone from your shop. You're not coming in. Uh, you can only sell the things that you want to sell. Or are we going to find that competition law makes it a bit weird that essentially you could be forced to sell something, which would be a weird, very, very weird. And certainly they could then dictate what sort of pricing you have, which they already do to an extent for predatory pricing. But it could go a bit further, whereby if you're charging a large commission, that itself would be abuse of a monopoly. Who knows? We'll see. It's very exciting times. The court case just started. I mean, it started in, in August, uh, and we're only in September now. And this is going to run and run. Anyone who remembers Apple versus Samsung, which was the other great court case that ran and ran and ran and ran to multiple jurisdictions all over the world. And I think only just recently, maybe in the last year or two, actually came to a complete stop then this could be something that goes and goes and goes. Certainly, the two players have got enough money. Epic's doing really well. But Apple, one of the most profitable companies in the world, I believe the news this week was that their 
something like their revenue or their profit or something is now greater than the entire FTSE 100. So um, yeah, think about that for a second. They certainly have deep pockets and I guess their lawyers are probably thinking cha-ching, but who knows. But anyway, good to speak to you guys. Um, do let me know what you think about this because I find it really interesting. Also, let me know what your first sort of video game from Epic that you played was. I want to know whether it's just me who still has a massive fondness for Unreal Tournament. The first one, not the later ones, the first one. I just remember being blown away and upgrading my graphics card just to play the, the thing uh, after I had so much trouble getting the original Unreal to run. But that's a bit of video game nostalgia for me. Um, I will be back very soon with something else, uh, maybe with a different camera. Hopefully still in the office. Let's hope this whole COVID thing goes away. There's talk of a winter wave. A winter wave sounds like, hello. A winter wave. Um, but let's hope that things are settling down, not just here in Hong Kong, but everywhere else in the world. So in the meantime, stay safe, take care. I'll be back very soon.